John here, guys, and today we're talking about a three inch versus a five inch racing on a track. Now, if you saw my video or a lot of other videos like Andy RC's on the Diatone GTR 349, you saw a lot of people speculating on whether this very affordable, very light and very fast three inch could potentially keep up with beat or be competitive with a five inch racer on a track. So I have flown this back to back um, with some five inches on three different tracks and we're going to go through that footage and check out some of my notes on this. Now let's run through the setups. This is the setup that was recently on my Catalyst Machine Works Raging Droner video and uh, it's a bit more dirty since then because I've been flying the junk out of it. Now this is a five inch uh, with the Emacs Magnum 2.1 stack. Catalyst Machine Works send it 2206 1800 kV motors on 6S. Um, and it has the Runcam Robin um, camera with the 1.8 lens. Now over here, this is the Dyson GTR 349. It has the Mamba stack. This is exactly how it comes. The only thing I've done is added an XM Plus receiver and I have added the Gymfan 3052R three inch flash props. Now these are banged up. They're gonna need to be changed because these tracks I've been running on them on are full of lots of different wooded areas, trees. Felt like I was racing through the forest on indoor on a speed bike at times. Uh, with some of these tracks that we have set up. Now, on the roller coaster track, which is the second we're gonna see, I actually did not run this. I ran one of my older campfire quads racing builds from last season because it was just so treacherous. I didn't want to destroy my nice new build for this season. Uh, and I was actually running HQ 4.3 props on all these videos. These are the new Kebab um, Gym Fan 5146.6 that I'm going to be reviewing very soon. But that's just what was on here for this. Um, so how did it do? A couple of notes before we get started. I don't have as much stick time on this 3 inch. So I knew that even if they were 100% equal, I was gonna be very slightly slower with this. Why is that? Well, that's because though this thing can potentially go faster in a straight line than the five inch, this has been clocked on other channels at 113 and 117 miles an hour. It's super fast. And I've been running this on a 650 milliamp 4S battery in these clips. This one has been on a 1300 6S battery. Um, so this one is substantially lighter. Without battery, this comes in at about 140 grams with props. This comes in at about 265 grams with props. Um, so let's get to the footage and we'll do some notes at the end. Okay, so the first track was at Battleground and you can see the, I have the diatone in the top left and the five inch Raging Droner on the bottom right. What do you notice uh, right off the back? I actually like the settings of this Runcam Swift 2 on the Diatone a lot more than what comes out of the box on this Runcam Robin. And here's the thing, on the little twisties, I'm doing very well with the three inch. When I have to go up in the air for some of these split S's, um, Matt's boobs that you see right there goes, you know, pretty fine with the three inch. Uh, but you can see that I'm a little bit still learning how this thing goes, how the throttle curve is. You see that giant split S? I take it a little bit wider than I necessarily have to because I'm a little bit afraid. And see, I, I hesitated on the second split S because I don't quite know the throttle curve for this one and I don't want to get it stuck in a tree. So you know i'm definitely going a little slower and see i got lost right there i was supposed to turn at that white tree i go here through the start gate it really has a, a great amount of agility you can turn so fast with this three inch size um but uh now these are how the rates how it ships so it's not my normal race rates uh so that's kind of a medium length track Let's go on to the second track. This is the roller coaster. So this was an interesting challenge because you had to go straight up to the sky. Check this out. Whoa. 
and there's not even a place right away to come back down. You have to go over there to the left. Then you're going straight through this tiny gap right here. And see, I hit a ghost branch right there. Frightening. I have another clip where this diatone fell from that height. I hit one of those ghost branches and fell about 25 feet. And uh, the canopy and everything else held up just fine. Look at, this is the really the perfect kind of track where this diatone would excel. Um, you can see that it's doing those maneuvers very nicely, but I'm so scared of getting stuck in that tree that I'm taking the roller coaster portions, the sky gate, if you will, a little bit slow. Uh, and so I kind of counted and my average time on the five inch for this track was about 20, 21 seconds. And the average time for the three inch was about 26 seconds. Now, to be fair, I ran the five inch, I want to say probably 12 times, 13 times. And I only ran the diatone two or three times. So not as much time to learn the track. Um, but still, this was a really fun day. Let's keep watching. Okay, now this is the third and final track. This is again back at Battleground with the Raging Droner on the bottom. Now, I wanted to make sure and build into this track a couple of long straightaways. I'm a little bit more comfortable with flying the diatone now on a track since this is the third time I've done it. You can see there are definitely parts where I'm outpacing the five inch. But because of the two or three long straights on this track, you can see that the battery starts to sag much faster than on the other medium length tracks. Now it does bounce back quickly back up to 3.7 right there. But uh, you can tell that if there was a track with a lot of straightaways where you needed to go full throttle several times, it's just not gonna be competitive. And see like, I swung it around too far, hit that branch. So all in all, it seemed that the three inch ran about 20 to 25% slower, but you would expect a lot of that margin of error to kind of come closer uh, with more practice at flying this. So a lot of that was just inexperience flying this particular craft and also using the default rates. If I put my own rates on there, it would be a little bit better. So see, I got a leaf stuck right there. Um, so very very interesting guys the one thing i really wanted to note is that the battery lasts um you know closer to three minutes on the first two tracks on this track the battery lasted a little bit less time you know right about two minutes as you can see like i'm already like at ready to land warning just under two minutes so could it compete on a track yes you're not going to be winning but it's definitely fast enough to compete now this was a 650 milliamp battery if you added an 850 battery you're going to suffer because of a little bit extra weight but that should give you enough juice to make it around just about any track very impressive this thing 
This thing is absolutely competitive on a five inch track. So if you want to bring this as your backup, if you want to um, race against the five inch guys and you just can't afford a five inch. Now, here's a note that we've been talking about in our chapter about how three inches would compete. So now that we know that it could finish a track, it could last the amount of time, um, it can you know theoretically if you got better with this you could keep up with at least me maybe not the you're not going to be winning with this but you'll at least be placing in the top you know half maybe if you get really good um could someone like a top pilot win with this i think they're still going to have battery issues guys unless you run like a 1000 milliamp but here's the most notable thing um, I got pretty lucky. I didn't break a canopy. If I did, it's not the end of the world because it comes with three. Um, I didn't break anything, but three inch frames are not meant to be crashed into gates at 70 miles an hour or 80 miles an hour. Um, these have very easily and plentiful, um, easily to obtain a plentiful spare parts that you can get, no problem. The spares on these, you can order them, but they're not as economical. Um, I believe a replacement bottom plate, it's like 20 or 25 bucks. Um, three inch motor bells are not meant to take the same amount of punishment. So if you hit a gate, the motor's most likely gonna be toast. Um, look, check out how far the motor protection on this five inch sticks out and look how far it sticks out on this one. So your frame is gonna be protecting your motor a lot more on a five inch. Um, so, but that really wasn't the question, right? It wasn't a question of, can it be as durable on a track? It was, can it keep up on a track? And I would say the answer, even though in the laps that I've shown is a bit slower, um, I would say that slowness is, is used to unfamiliarity with the throttle curves. Now, several of these tracks had very tall split S's. That's something that we do in our town, but that's not something you would typically see on a multi-GP track. So on something like one of the qualifier tracks, this I would expect this to perform, to perform even closer to my times with a five inch. Now the thing is, when you're flying on those multi-GP tracks, the reason I flew on these wooded tracks is because there's only two or three of us flying. On those multi-GP tracks, you have six people, sometimes eight people in the air. This will also not survive a mid-air. If you get clipped in the air, even slightly, the extra mass of this means that it's most likely going to be able to stay flying. You're going to get knocked to the ground with this. And because there's no fin on the top, um, because the props are smaller. If you land upside in the grass, there's very little chance that you're gonna be able to turtle mode and save yourself and get back in the air. So those are just some notes, but Andy RC, I would overall have to say was right. This thing could fly on a track. It could potentially be competitive. It is a lot of fun. And uh, there's not really another under $150 solution that's of any size that I could think would even be able to keep up on a track. Um, I could not build a five inch for $140 um, that would be able to do what this thing does. You know, I'm about to come out with a low cost five inch video, but that price is gonna be a lot higher than this. So um, just something to think about. Very interesting. And those are the results uh, one year later from the last three inch versus a five inch video. What do you guys think? in the comments are you gonna fly your three inch on a track or four inch let me know what you've done thanks guys